Uh, welcome to another video lecture on uh, convolution codes. Uh, in earlier video lectures, we saw how uh, channel coding uh, helps us in uh, reducing uh, probability of error. Uh, there were two ways of reducing probability of error or uh, channel coding. Uh, one was block codes, another was uh, convolution codes. In your earlier course, you have studied uh, uh, plenty about uh, block codes and uh, their uh, decoding techniques. Uh, in this uh, communication system 2 course, uh, you will be introduced to convolution codes. Uh, this video uh, is first among uh, explaining uh, convolution codes. Uh, the basic differences uh, between the block codes and convolution codes uh, is about uh, uh, the information bits uh, uh, transmission. In block codes, information bits are followed by uh, parity bits. Uh, however, in convolution uh, codes, information bits are uh, spread over uh, the sequences of uh, bits. So this is obtained by convolving uh, the information bits uh, with uh, the impulse responses of the memory. And hence that uh, convolution process, uh, mathematical convolution process uh, has uh, uh, coined the term as convolution codes. Uh, the another uh, basic difference between uh, block codes and convolution codes is that uh, in the convolution codes has memory uh, to generate code word. It, uh, the code word which gets generated uh, using uh, convolution technique uh, doesn't just depend on uh, the current uh, information bit. It also depends on uh, uh, M previous input blocks. Here M refers for uh, uh, order of memory. Uh, block codes detect and correct uh, block of errors. Uh, however, convolution codes uh, are uh, suitable for uh, uh, correcting random errors since uh, then in, uh, the information bits are spread over uh, uh, randomly along the sequence. Uh, these are useful in uh, uh, detecting and correcting uh, random errors. The structure of convolution codes is also slightly uh, uh, in difference with block codes uh, since it has got uh, memory. Uh, N comma K is followed by M, uh, which uh, I have described earlier, where M refers for order of memory, uh, where K uh, refers a number of input bits uh, fed into the encoder at a time. So at a time, we are going to feed a uh, certain number of uh, bits, uh, which is defined by uh, the index K. The N uh, refers for uh, number of output bits produced by the encoder for each set of k bit sequence. It also indicates uh, the number of uh, algebraic function generators, which you will be seeing shortly. Uh, also, it is called as number of uh, modulo 2 adders, uh, which is used to produce a uh, uh, code word. Uh, of course, m refers uh, to memory of encoder. Uh, it also indicates number of uh, previous input blocks, uh, which are used to generate each output. Uh, and hence, this is the fundamental difference between uh, block codes and uh, convolution codes. If we try to understand uh, much better, we'll see certain examples and try to explore it. Uh, there is another parameter called as constraint length, which uh, we have used uh, several times in earlier videos. Uh, uh, it is indicated as either K or L in certain sources. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it indicates a maximum number of input bits in a single output stream that can be affected by any input bit. Uh, you will see shortly what would be the meaning of this statement. We will try to explain that. Uh, so, uh, uh, a typical uh, convolution encoder uh, looks uh, uh, something like this, where uh, it has a certain amount of information bits which are fed uh, into its input. As you can see, uh, it has got uh, a certain order of memory. That order of memory is split into k groups of bits. So at once, it, it processes uh, k information bits. And hence, uh, the indication of uh, k here, the small k. Uh, the k information bits uh, processed at once and are uh, uh, produced as code words. So these are the outputs of encoder sequence. So encoder sequence are n uh, in number. So there are n modulo 2 adders, and hence uh, uh, it produces uh, n bits of uh, code words at a time. The memory indicates is uh, indicates number of uh, memory stages here, which are in terms of shift registers. Uh, it has got uh, amount of k. Uh, each uh, unit is grouped into k number of stages uh, and number of uh, shift registers uh, can be uh, calculated as k times uh, small k which indicates the constraint length 
L. Uh, the performance of such uh, convolution uh, codes uh, depends on uh, primarily on two factors. One is on uh, constraint length, uh, another is on uh, uh, code rate. So the constraint length, uh, uh, if it is longer, so longer the constraint length, uh, more powerful is the code. Also, there will be more coding gain. As you know, uh, if uh, there is an increasing in coding gain, uh, you'll have lesser uh, probability of error. Uh, with that, uh, we'll have uh, complexity in decoder as uh, complexity in uh, encoder increases obviously it will be very difficult to decode as well uh, also it produces uh, a more decoding delay more the complexity more uh, time is required to decode uh, the original symbol that gets uh, transmitted uh, another primary factor is the coding rate uh, the constraint length should be la larger or longer or the coding rate should be smaller coding rate as you know is defined as k by n uh, if coding rate is smaller, uh, we will produce a more powerful code uh, due to extra redundancy. In the sense, when n is greater than k, n is number of uh, output bits or code word length. So if it is greater than the incoming information bits, we need to have extra redundancy. Uh, with extra redundancy, the, uh, the code becomes more powerful, more uh, uh, resilient to uh, the noise in the channel. With an extra addition of redundant bits, uh, you'll incur uh, uh, less bandwidth efficiency. In the sense, you need more amount of bandwidth to transmit uh, uh, the code words. So the performance of convolution codes uh, overall depends on uh, these two factors. So that our constraint length should be longer, our coding rate should be smaller. Of course, they come with uh, an additional costs. Let's take an example and try to understand the structure of convolution codes. Uh, here we have taken an example of uh, half rate uh, with a constraint length of 3. Uh, with a half rate in the sense incoming information bit is processed bit by bit, 1 bit per uh, unit time, which produces 2 bits at a time. Okay, The constraint length k is equal to 3 indicates uh, the number of uh, shift registers or number of memory elements in the encoder. Uh, so it can be uh, constructed uh, with this given information of data, uh, but we'll never know how uh, the outputs are encoded. We need to have the structure of convolution encoder to understand it better and it how it produces uh, output uh, code words. Uh, as you can see, the first output uh, is indicated as U1 is through uh, addition of uh, three uh, memory elements uh, which is modulo 2 addition which generates first coded bit uh, the second coded bit at the lower part uh, is summation of first element and the last element which gets added with the modulo 2 addition and produces second coded bit we'll take a specific example and uh, try to generate uh, these code words uh, the example here that we have considered is uh, message sequence as 101 uh, first bit uh, is the first one which will be inputted and next will be 0 and next will be this one. Okay, for the first bit, uh, let's take at the first timestamp at T1, uh, the initial state of the memory register is assumed to be 0, which is our uh, reset as 0. The first incoming bit is 1. Uh, with the first incoming bit 1, as you can see, it's a summation of uh, 3 memory elements. Uh, 1 plus 0 plus 0, which is summation of 3 uh, bit, uh, will produce the first code word as U1, which is 1. And summation of the first bit and the last bit, uh, which is again 1, is the output of uh, a second coded bit as another 1. So the, at first instant of time, with uh, 1 bit of message, you'll get 2 bits of output, and hence the rate 1 by 2, you'll get 1, 1 for the input bit 1. Uh, similarly, uh, for the next timestamp, uh, this is uh, shifted right. Uh, so this one will be moved to uh, the middle memory element. The next incoming bit is 0. 0, 1, 0 would be the state of uh, the register. Uh, at uh, second timestamp, it again does the same job. where uh, Three elements in the memory register are uh, uh, added with modulo 2 addition and it produces another bit uh, output bit as 1. 0 plus 0 is uh, u2, which is 0 again. So for bit 0, you will get the output code word as 10. For the next timestamp uh, t3, another bit is uh, uh, flushed in, so which is 1. 101 would be the status of the register. 
similar addition will give you the code word so this can be uh, progressed further after uh, completion of uh, or after exhausting uh, all the message sequence uh, we should ensure that the status of the register or the memory uh, is reset to zero for which we should uh, feed or flush extra zeros to make it uh, uh, zero uh, all a next timestamp uh, flushing zeros which is actually not the part of message sequence but we are adding these extra zeros in order to flush out all the non zero elements in the memory extra zero at next timestamp will produce one zero as the code word uh, another extra zero would would produce one one as the code word and similarly for the last one if you flush another extra zero it will be reset and we need not take that extra zero as part of uh, the code word because it will be reset to zero zero uh, to summarize what we have done uh, with uh, this structure of uh, convolution code with rate half and constraint length uh, as three with that we have inputted uh, 101 as a message uh, bit stream uh, which gets encoded to 1110 00 10 and 11 so on the last two sets 10 and 11 are the are due to flushings of for two zeros uh, so that uh, for three bits of input uh, you'll get in fact six outputs uh, with actual 101 as the input uh, this is a rate where three incoming bits produce a six output bit a uh, three by six would be half uh, rate however with flushings of uh, zeros uh, to reset the memory we have added two more zeros uh, and hence the effective uh, code rate uh, is three over 10 with just three incoming uh, uh, length of the message bit uh, we have produced 10 bits of output effective bit rate uh, or effective code rate is always less than the actual code rate uh, it's 3 by 10 and actual code it is half so extra output bits is due to flushings of zeros to in order to reset the memory a uh, convolution codes uh, can also be represented in uh, vector form uh, which is easy to understand uh, mathematically uh, if there are n vectors uh, each with uh, k times k elements this is a constraint length of the uh, memory uh, we'll describe uh, one vector for each mod to either uh, this will uh, mathematically indicate the structure of convolution codes uh, so let's try to uh, take an example and uh, understand it better uh, the ith element in each vector each generator in fact is one uh, it, it will be either one or zero it will be one if that ith stage in shift register is connected uh, to the corresponding uh, modulo to adder if it is not connected we are going to make it as zero uh, let's quickly take an example and try understanding uh, how we can represent uh, convolution codes vectorially if i take a particular example like in previous case uh, this was the case of half rate uh, and constraint length of three of convolution encoder as you can see there are two outputs and hence there are two generators uh, one generator on the top and another generator on the bottom the first generator uh, has inputs from all the three uh, memory elements mm -hmm. and hence the output u1 is connected to all the three elements here and hence you have got uh, the generator function as one 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 uh, similarly the g2 which represents the generator function of uh, bottom modulo 2 adder where the output is connected to only the first and the last memory element uh, the middle one is unconnected and hence it is represented as 101 generator matrix can be constructed using individual generator sequence for the vectors uh, the output u uh, is uh, represented as a convolution of incoming message sequence with this generator sequence mathematically it's a convolution of simply input with the generator and hence the name uh, name of the convolution codes if i try to take another example uh, here itself uh, this is another structure of convolution code uh, as you can see the first output the first out uh, bit of uh, uh, code word is from only from the first element it is unconnected from the next two and hence the generator uh, uh, vector for the first encoder would be simply one zero zero for the second encoded bit uh, it has got input from the first and the last and hence uh, it's one zero one 
and finally the third encoder bit is produced uh, using all the three memory elements and hence g3 is 111 this is how you are going to represent the structure of convolution code uh, vectorially or mathematically once you know uh, this is the generator uh, vector from which you can generate a, a generator matrix itself which will be simply convolution with incoming bit sequence to generate a, a output bit stream uh, with an additional example here uh, let's consider a 2 by 3 uh, rate uh, convolution encoder with a constraint length of 2 as you can see this is the constraint length which is uh, uh, produces uh, output bits at a uh, a uh, two bits input sequence however there are four memory elements so it's k is equal to 2 uh, it's a uh, big k is 2 and small k is also 2 so uh, the constraint length as you can see in terms of l if you want to say it is 2 into 2 which is 4 however uh, certain sources will uh, take uh, uh, constraint length as big k and small k we have considered here constraint length as capital k so quickly if you look into the generator vector uh, here Uh, as you can see the first output is produced from the first third and the fourth memory element and hence it is 1 0 1 1 as the first generator matrix the second is uh, produced from uh, one first one second one and the fourth one and hence it is 1 1 0 1, 1 and accordingly the third encoded output uh, has uh, is produced from the first and the third uh, memory element and hence it is 1 0 1 0 accordingly we can write uh, vectorially uh, the generator uh, uh, polynomials as 1011 1101 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, it can be uh, further be expressed in terms of octal representation uh, as 1011 represents uh, 13 1101 represents 15 and 1010 uh, represents 12 so in an octal form also you can represent uh, these generators in the next video lecture uh, we will uh, try to understand convolution codes in a very deeper manner uh, we will try to understand uh, how in a different form convolution uh, code structure be represented as uh, this ends with uh, uh, basic understanding of convolution encoders and how they produce uh, output bits for uh, sets of incoming uh, information bits thank you